California, 200 years ago, looked a lot different than it does today. Back then, there were no cars, no TVs or phones. Houses didn't even have electricity. But one thing that's the same today as it was back then is the existence of gangs. Tiburcio Vazquez was born on April 11, 1835 in Monterey, California. Monterey, California at that time was a part of Mexico, and Tiburcio's father had been a soldier for the Mexican government. Tiburcio had three brothers and two sisters, and his family was considered upper middle class. So as a child, Tiburcio always had everything he needed. Growing up, he lived in a Spanish-speaking village, but he attended a public school that also taught English. So by the time he turned 13, Tiburcio could read, write, and speak both Spanish and English fluently, which was uncommon for villagers during that time. But age 13 is also when Tiburcio's life changed as he knew it. It was 1848. The Mexican-American War had ended, and overnight, California became part of the United States. Americans began flooding into California, and many of the native-born Californians lost parts of their land as Mexican villages became American cities. California natives like Tiburcio grew angry as they felt the newly arriving Americans were taking away their social rights. And for Tiburcio Vasquez, that anger became violent. When he was 17, he joined a gang with his cousin and began stealing horses from Americans. Two years later, he was at a dance hall when a member from his gang and an American man got into a fight. During the altercation, an American law officer who was trying to break up the fight was killed. Although Tiburcio said he had no involvement in the killing, he still fled, becoming an outlaw. Four years later, he was caught and sentenced to five years at San Quentin State Prison. But three years into his sentence, he tried to escape, organizing a prison break involving 300 prisoners who all rushed the prison doors and made a run for it. Tiburcio got away, but two months later he was found riding a stolen horse and was sent back to San Quentin for four more years. As soon as Tiburcio got released from prison, he started the Vasquez Gang, a group of bandits who together began robbing stagecoaches and general stores. According to Tiburcio, this was retaliation against the American takeover. For 20 years, Tiburcio led the Vasquez gang, committing violent armed robberies and stealing people's money, gold, horses, and cattle. He and his gang once robbed an entire town, robbing all of its businesses. He was arrested numerous times, but each time he would serve his sentence, get out, and then return to doing robberies with the Vasquez gang. During one of the robberies, he was shot and had to hide out with his sister who nursed him back to health. Tiburcio had dozens of people all over California who would help him and give him a place to hide out while he was on the run from the law. He'd also sometimes hide in the mountains. Being from California, Tiburcio knew the land better than most law enforcement, so he could hide in the wilderness for days. His hideouts are one of the main reasons he survived for so long. Most outlaw gang members were killed at a young age, so Tiburcio became notorious for having lived a life as a criminal well into his 30s. Every newspaper wrote about him, but they didn't just write about what he was doing. They also wrote about how he looked while he was doing it. The newspapers called him the Gentleman Bandit, describing him as a dangerous gang member, but one who was charming, well-dressed, and educated. They also said he loved women, liquor, partying, and gambling, which was what he spent most of the stolen money on. But in all the years Tiburcio lived as a bandit, he was never directly charged with any murders. That was until 1873. Tiburcio and two members of his gang entered a general store in Northern California. 
The gang ordered the customers and employees to lie face down as their hands were tied behind their backs. The men then robbed the store, expecting a quick getaway. But as they encountered people outside of the store, the scene turned to chaos. Tiburcio and his men opened fire, and by the time it was all over, three people who lived near the store were dead, and the Vasquez gang was on the run. For the next few months, Tiburcio and his men hid out. One of the gang members, Abdon Leva, even brought his wife to visit him at their hiding spot, which turned out to be a mistake, because Tiburcio and the man's wife began having an affair. And Abdon Leva wasn't just a member of the gang, he was also Tiburcio's friend. So when he found out Tiburcio was sleeping with his wife, he wanted revenge. Not caring about what would happen to himself, Abdon Leva walked into the sheriff's station and turned himself in for the general store robbery. And then he told the sheriff where they could find Tiburcio. But by the time the sheriff got there, Tiburcio was long gone, on the run again. This time, the governor of California stepped in and hired manhunters to help law enforcement find Tiburcio Vasquez. The governor offered an $8,000 reward to anyone who could capture Tiburcio alive, and $6,000 if he was brought in dead. But Tiburcio had fled the Northern California area to Southern California to a friend's house in Los Angeles. This was his final hiding spot where he hid for a year. Here, he began having another relationship with a woman who lived at the house where he was hiding. But the woman started hearing rumors that Tiburcio had gotten his underage niece pregnant. Then she read in a local newspaper about Tiburcio visiting a known prostitute in the middle of the night. Feeling betrayed, the woman contacted the manhunters and showed them the house where Tiburcio was hiding. When the manhunters came to arrest Tiburcio, he jumped out of the window and tried to run to his horse. He almost made it, but was shot twice in the arm before finally surrendering. He was then arrested and taken back to Northern California to face trial. Abdon Leva, the man whose wife Tiburcio had slept with, had been in jail since confessing, and he'd given a full statement, claiming that Tiburcio was the one who shot the men during the general store robbery. Tiburcio gave a whole different statement saying that Abdon Leva was the one who actually shot and killed the men. But the judge and jury didn't care who the shooter was. The evidence had shown that even if Tiburcio didn't kill anyone during the robbery, he was still there, leader of the Vasquez gang, and therefore an accomplice. Tiburcio was found guilty and sentenced to death by hanging. As Tiburcio awaited his death sentence, he allowed reporters to come to his jail cell and interview him. During one of the interviews, he said, I have robbed a good many men, but I have never killed one. On March 19, 1875, Tiburcio Vasquez was hanged for murder. He was 39 years old. In the years following his death, he became even more famous than when he was alive. Songs were sung about him, plays were made, and books were written. And the area where Tiburcio spent much of his time hiding out from the law 200 years ago is today a 932-acre park that's named after him. But this celebration of Tiburcio's legacy is not shared by everyone. There are some people who say that he was a murderous gang member who robbed innocent people and that he would have become that way regardless of his situation. But then there are many who see Tiburcio as a hero, the great California bandit who refused to submit to an American takeover. Whichever way you see it, Tiburcio Vasquez will always be a part of California's history.